Morning everyone, welcome to um, Thursday's Thought for the Day. And well, I've been having a battle with the squirrels this week. Um, when I put the food out for the birds on the bird table, the squirrels watch from afar. And uh, as soon as I go into the house, they come leaping through the trees. And there they are on the bird table, eating all the seeds before the birds can get to it. So I spend a lot of time going out and shooing them away, but it's pointless really. Um, because as soon as I shut the door again, they're back, they're back again. I can see the funny side of this because I know that I'm always going to be the loser. So I've been reflecting on this. Why, why shouldn't the squirrels have the food? Why do I feel well, I've got to prioritise the birds over the squirrels and the, the squirrels can, you know, go and find some food somewhere else. They're, they're all God's creatures, aren't they? You know, so they need feeding as well. So instead of fighting them, I've decided to accommodate them. <laughs> I don't mean I'm going to invite them in the house and have them sit up to the dinner table with me or anything like that. Heaven forbid I can imagine me running around the house all day trying to catch them. No, I, I bought a squirrel feeding station and uh, some specialist squirrel food and I'm hoping that that will um, satisfy them. They won't, they'll leave the bird food alone and it will solve the problem. We'll see. Uh, I'll keep you updated. Anyway... Yesterday, I had to admit to someone that I was feeling too anxious about something I'd promised to do. It was a difficult thing to admit because the thoughts of being a failure and, and letting that person down were almost as bad as the anxiety itself. And it was important for me to feel trust in this person as I was telling that I was telling because sometimes placed in the wrong hands an admission like this can can actually make things much worse but thankfully thank god this person was gracious in their response and actually thanked me for telling them so that it was important that we feel able to say such things uh, to each other and reassured me that i'd not that i wasn't a failure and that it was no trouble at all for them to full fill the task that I'd promised to do and the relief and the thankfulness um, that I felt at this lovely compassionate response was was immeasurable and uh, and it released me and I felt I could get on with my plans for the day uh, up to that point I'd, I'd really just been thinking and overthinking and not being not being able to get on with anything uh, now you know, I know you and you know that many people suffer from anxiety and I read uh, somewhere that I think it's about one in four people in the population do um, that anxiety to the point of it being debilitating. And, uh, I, you know, I, I suffer from it para periodically. Um, and it's a part of my life that, that I've come to accept and paradoxically the acceptance is part of the healing um it, you know anxiety becomes a battle when the smallest thing induces anxious thoughts i at my worst times i can even get anxious about a simple thing like planning to go and have a shower or wash my hair and get anxious about meeting people going to meetings or even just leaving the house and, and COVID certainly hasn't helped with this. I, I, I'm aware that I'm becoming, um, I suppose, more insulated. It's not, I'm not insulated against the outside world because I keep in touch with, with people and, and news and so on and so forth, but insular in the sense that I'm staying in the house more and finding it more difficult. Uh, to 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 get out if I haven't got a particular purpose uh, to, to, to go out a task to, to do um, 
and, and I'm not telling you this to invoke sympathy on your part. I'm just hoping that someone might listen, might be listening who recognises themselves in, in what I say and, and feels less alone with their anxiety. Uh, because there's, there's a lot of us about, <laughs> one in four apparently. But as Christians, we might find it hard to confess that we're suffering from anxiety because, well, people might question our faith. We're, st we're still late. They might accuse us of not trusting God enough or, or tell, tell you that worry is a sin. Now, now I've had that in the past from people. And, and w you know, at one time would take that on board. They might not say, they might say we're not praying enough, we're not reading the Bible enough or applying it correctly. But anxiety is no respecter of persons. Even the per people with the strongest faith uh, and, and people who aren't socially isolated in any way, who are, who are very much part of, uh, of things. Often people who seem to be managing life very well. Um, a lot of people wouldn't know that I suffer from anxiety because it would appear from the outside that I'm getting on with things uh, well enough. And people often with anxiety tend to suffer quietly and anonymously. When at their worst, they'll, they'll hide away so people don't see them at their worst. And we live in a culture, don't we, where that values self-reliance and individualism and identifying yourself as someone prone to anxiety can be seen as a sign of weakness. But in reality, um, I, I believe it's a sign of strength. And, and strangely, another paradox, I believe it's one of hope. And I refuse to be defined by my anxiety. Um, even though I'm quite happy to put it out there to talk about it. Um, anxiety is part of me, but it's not all of me. It doesn't and won't define me. It has in the past. Um, that's that, but things, time goes on. Things change. I take a different attitude. Um, I, I, I won't be the victim of it. I am more than my anxiety and if you suffer in the same way you are more than your anxiety. And I also know that God has used my anxiety to give me an understanding of others um, to enable me to question and not to take things for granted and, and I hope I do hope this, that it gives me some sort of humility when I deal with other people in, in whatever circumstances they find themselves in. I can only hope that that's true. You know, faith isn't emotional amnesia either. Faith can give us courage to face the brokenness of life and emotional honesty is part of faith. And faith is the intimate act of trusting God with your real self instead of hiding how you feel or trying to do or be more. You know, Jesus tells, says to us, don't hide. He invites us to come to him and he promises to give rest to our souls. And we're invited to come to him, weary, confused, numb, anxious, angry or stressed and he tells us to simply come as we are, come as we are. And Jesus himself obeyed, he prayed, he praised, gave thanks, yet he suffered emotional trauma. He was overwhelmed by impending physical and emotional abuse, abandonment and betrayal. He says, my soul is deeply troubled overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death and then going a little farther he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible the hour might pass from him and when the apostle paul encourages not to be anxious but to pray give thanks and present our request to god 
He was encouraging us to experience the peace in taking our problems to God rather than finding peace in our ability to solve them with our own understanding. You know, I speak in these thoughts for the day a lot about being real, real with God and real with each other. And if we are to be in community, it's essential to develop both our willingness to do so and the trust to be able to do so. Amen. And um, I might be back with my <laughs> with my anxious self on uh, on Monday. I hope I, I am. I'll speak to you then and uh, look after yourselves. Take care. And if this if this has touched you in some way, if you're feeling the same way, maybe make a comment. Um, or if you know how to contact me, I'm, I'm happy to uh, to chat or write back to you. Okay, you take care, look after yourselves and God bless. Bye bye.